All right, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to make good on my promise to do a Calyx OS installation video. We're starting from the Calyx OS home screen, but no worries, you will see that I will wipe this phone completely and reinstall Calyx OS. Calyx OS is awesome. It's one of the most convenient custom ROMs to install on any device. It's also the most convenient to use because everything that you need comes with it to have a D Google device. There are a couple apps that don't work, but overall it's just amazing. We're going to install using Windows today instead of Linux. This just means means that I'm going to get a bunch of random annoying pop-ups instead of going through the Linux installation, which I normally do. So don't mind all the Windows beeping at me. For some reason, it wants to connect to this phone as some kind of an external drive. We're following the instructions. Terminology it just goes to the, the terminology of flashing and the different items that are in this folder. First thing they say is to prepare your Android device. This means that we go into settings and, excuse me, the gear icon to go into system settings. We're going to go to about phone, scroll down to the bottom and hit build number seven times. We are now a developer, so you can go back, go to system, and then go to developer options. From here, you should see OEM unlocking available. Click on that and then click enable. If that's not available, then your device will not support any kind of custom ROMs, including Calyx OS and Graphene OS. I think they also have Lineage OS for Micro-G or just straight Lineage OS for the Pixel devices as well. Scrolling down the page, we will see USB debugging. We will also click on this and click OK. And now we're going to get a bunch of the random annoying Windows beeps. Sometimes this allow USB debugging will pop up right here, sometimes it won't. Don't be concerned if it doesn't pop up here, because as soon as we run the installation script, everything will run just fine. I'm going to click Always Allow. When this comes up, remember to click Always Allow, and then click Allow. Now we're going to go back over to the instructions. You need to prepare your host computer, which involves installing the drivers. I did this for Pixel devices a long time ago, but the instructions here are explicit. If you're familiar with Windows, then you've been into these settings before with the devices. If you're a newbie, don't worry. These instructions are incredibly clear and you will have no problem following them to get your drivers installed. Now it recommends that we download certain files, which include the device flasher and the factory image. And I have both of those in this folder in downloads, Calyx OS in the same directory. These instructions do say to put them in the same directory. The other thing they recommend is that you check the SHA codes to ensure that the software you downloaded was not corrupted and does not have viruses in it. I will leave a card right here. I have found software on the internet that has been either corrupted or hacked with non-matching SHA codes, including Signal APK from the Signal download page, which is a little bit frightening because that's supposed to be a secure app, but you never really know who's trying to get into your device. So always run these SHA codes. You can see I ran these verbatim and both of these output hashes work and match perfectly with what's on the Calyx OS website. Now we're down to the part where we're going to do the installation. And this is what I mean by easy. If you've seen my other flashing videos, there's a whole bunch of steps. Usually I direct you over to my bootloader unlock video. This does all of that for you. What we're going to do is find this file right here, device flasher, and we're going to go ahead and double click it. And it's going to start the process. Now we can see that it has a bunch of stuff it wants us to do. Connect to Wi-Fi. You don't actually have to do this. I didn't do that with this phone. Enable developer options. Build number seven times. Already went through that. USB debugging. We already went through that. Enable OEM unlocking. Already did that. So we are good to go to hit enter. And there we go, enter. We can see that this is the correct phone. And then press enter again. This next part is going to ask us to allow the bootloader to unlock. Sorry for all the beeps. And so I will just navigate down to unlock the bootloader and hit the power key. So volume down, then power key, and it will unlock the bootloader. There's one other, one or two other things that it will ask us to do throughout this process as far as navigating and clicking OK on the phone. But Realistically, I'm going to either speed through or cut out most of this part of the video because it's incredibly boring. 
just watching the phone and the terminal do their thing. All right, it requires our action again. So I'm going to click volume down to allow locking of the bootloader and then and then click the power button. Now the bootloader will lock. This is one of the advantages of Calyx OS and Graphene OS. They allow you to lock the bootloader so that no one can wipe your phone without your knowledge or consent, which is really awesome. And now we are getting into the first boot. It's been nine minutes and 30 seconds according to my timer, and I've spent a lot of that time yapping. So this is probably gonna take you about six or seven minutes by following these instructions from the time that you actually start the device flasher. And you really only have to do two things during that process, which is unlocking the bootloader, interacting with the phone to do that, and then relocking the bootloader. All right, we're now in the intro screen, and I'm just gonna skip through most of this, but I will pause we get to some of the important items. This part's important, this is micro G. If you leave this green, the phone will be more convenient because it will allow micro G to tap into Google services, which will make this phone behave very similar to a phone with Google Play installed. The disadvantage of having this set to green is it will send more information up to Google, albeit less than you would send with Google Play, just based on the fact that micro G is an open source app. I'm going to leave that green for demonstration. Most of you who are using Calyx OS, you've decided that you want some of that additional convenience that is not available with something like a Graphene OS, which is extremely secure, but also a little bit less convenient. Most of these apps you're going to want to install. Aurora Store, this allows you to get into standard Google apps. Briar, I think, is messaging. Calyx OS VPN, that's just, it's nice to have, and it doesn't cost anything. K9 Mail, this is something you'd want to use if you still need to connect to Gmail because you still have that. Nextcloud. Nextcloud is awesome as a Google Drive alternative. I highly recommend it and I have a video. I'll drop a card right now in the video so that you can go over and view that. Scrambled eggs. This is so that if you take a photo, you can remove the metadata from it so that no one else can see who you are or where you were when you snapped a photo. I've never been able to get it to work, but one of these days I'm gonna get in there and, and figure that one out. Signal. I really like Signal for messaging, and then Weather App, Tor Browser. A lot of these are really good apps that come by default, including a PDF viewer, which a lot of custom ROMs don't come with, but something that I find indispensable on my phones. I'm going to click Next, and we're going to go to the main page. You will see that we did this installation from a previous Calyx OS install. The process is exactly the same, because remember, Google Android is Android, so unlocking the bootloader, doing the OEM unlocking, and... USB debugging steps. Those are the same if you're coming from a default Google Android install. So on the main screen, we're going to see I never metadata. I didn't, I didn't like, which is a comedic pun. We can see we are back in Calyx OS. This is a completely fresh install. From here, you can go and install all of your favorite apps and get your phone configured exactly the way you like it. We're going to look over into Micro G really quick, and then I can show you why this phone is so convenient, or why this ROM is so convenient. We go to self-check. These down here, permissions granted, these allow things like GPS to work, various other items, just controlling the flow of information. These top two sections control spoofing, so that the apps on your phone think that it's interacting with Google Play services, even though MicroG is intercepting that and emulating it. You can see Google device registration, this means that some of your data is going to Google, but the advantage to that is that you get push notifications through cloud messaging. This is something that you would get if you installed, say, ProtonMail, which is still dependent on Google Play for push notifications. They said that they're working on a solution for that, but as of right now, they still use Google Play. And that's one of the things that makes this ROM so convenient is that it it, except for a small handful of apps, it behaves exactly like you would expect a Google Android phone to work. Overall, I, I really like the Pixel 3. It's still relatively performant. There are a couple of drawbacks relative to my OnePlus 7T, 
The huge advantage that it has is that Calyx OS is better than Lineage OS or Micro G. I found that the push notifications are more reliable and it's just it's just simpler to use. But then the drawbacks to my OnePlus 7T is the battery in this one was a little bit older when I got it, so it feels like I'm missing about 20% capacity. And then the charging on this phone is a little bit slower than the OnePlus 7T, which makes it just a little bit less convenient to use. But overall, the Pixel series, the, the Pixel 3, is a really nice phone, and I'd recommend them, especially if you've been into mid-range Android phones for a long time. It's a really good upgrade or, or side grade that will allow you to de-Google and maintain a lot of the convenience that you've come to love from the Android oper operating system. If you have any questions, if anything in this video is unclear and you want me to speak to a little bit more, please leave a comment down below. Thanks for stopping by. This is Nick, signing out.